welcome to a funny thing called business. We are four business owners with over 30 years of collective experience and drab belts who now share the capers and triumphs of running a small business and how we now avoid perilous customer chaos and pitfalls. So I'm Claire Worley. We also have Darren Langley, Kate Curry, Pete Morgan. Brilliant. We are all here present. So today, people, we are talking about the apps. So before we uh, crack on with sharing uh, about the apps that we use and the good, the bad and the ugly, I just did a little bit of research before we jumped on uh, to get some stats around apps so I could give this, you know, some context. Nice. So, um, Apps are uh, projected to bring in 935 billion in revenue by 2023. Wow. Yep. In the wrong um, business. <laughs> Apple apps has 1.96 million apps available for download. And 21% of millennials open an app 50 plus times per day. <laughs> so huge numbers, obviously huge business. So I think this is a really good uh, thing for us to be talking about today. So I'll kick us off with, let's go positive. Mm. What's your favorite app, um, app, app or app experience? And Pete, let's start with you. What's your favourite app? Oh, it's, I mean, this is the thing. I love my phone. I have, I get withdrawal symptoms <laughs> if I leave it at home. So I have hundreds of apps uh, on mine. And I think if it's kind of down to usage, it's probably a uh, a photo app called Snapseed that I use, which is quite a good. It's a free uh, photo editor um, mm. that you can just do a little bit more with than you can do on your phone or by you know if you don't want to pay a subscription or you don't want to put it on your laptop or your desktop. Uh, and it's just really good for just before you're posting on instagram and uh, you know i mean it's only so good i can make myself look a bit more colorful or a bit brighter <laughs> or dark i mean i can't kind of go there isn't a button for taking 20 years off me um you know it's all it, it's all the stuff you'd expect but um so i think that off the top of my head that and and, I, and that's kind of not taken into account kind of social media apps those are you know away from those uh so yeah snapseed is probably the one that I use the most uh, and I get the most use out of, yeah. Mm, okay, so I'm going to be a little antidote then to your love of your phone and love of apps. I've got one page on my phone. Um, for me, this title, Happy Apps, is a complete oxymoron because <laughs> I hate relationship with my phone. So, um, I've got a few socials put in a little box that I use, but for me, my favorite apps, and I'm not sure what this says about me, it's my banking. <laughs> it's my banking apps. <laughs> and my use of uh, my Stripe app. Um, those I probably check daily you know, to, to keep all my accounts updated and all in line. So what does that say about me that bank? Maps are my favourite. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. No answers coming back. <laughs> I try and just avoid mine. I never like yeah. what they say. <laughs> uh, dear. So, Kate, what's your favourite apps? Well, I was just going to comment, Pete, you reckon there isn't an app that takes 20 years off you, but Zoom does actually have a enhance my appearance filter on it. What? <laughs> yeah, <'Cause> did I... you... <laughs> I'm looking so fresh faced today. <laughs> well, uh, it, it's funny you mention that because uh, 
my daughter did a tutoring lesson online yesterday and she went mom you've been telling me not to use filters and you've got one on your zoom i was like <laughs> fine it's just to give me a bit more color <laughs> I've oh. just turned up the brightness a little bit. <laughs> I use it for my eyebrows as well, so that's always good. <laughs> but, um, I suppose in terms of like useful apps that uh, I use um, within my business, for me, um, there's two turning points where apps have been really pivotal. And the first one is using zero for my accounting. Yeah. And See, we're the same! It doesn't sound very exciting on the surface of it. Yeah, it kind of falls into under banking, I guess. But, oh, God, it saves so much time and, you know, all that side of things, you know, managing receipts. Now I can just photograph them on my phone, just upload mm. them, and it all just, oh, and it's, you know, just one click, and you can see, oh, there's my operating profit for the year so far. And, uh, <laughs> and things like that never used to excite me, but now they do. <laughs> it's really weird. It's really weird. Um, so there's that one uh, and then the other one is Trello and that's been amazing so Darren kindly um, introduced me to Trello um, a couple of years ago and now everything's on there my whole life is on there I use it for workflow organization managing my marketing campaigns and um, I've even got my husband on there now so we can manage that <laughs> <laughs> who's painting the fence next weekend <laughs> oh you've been tagged in that's you then you know it's uh, it, it, it's just incredible it's been life-changing both of those two things brilliant okay Darren well okay I knew you'd say Trello so I'm gonna cross <laughs> that one off my list that was top of my list because it is amazing and, and my life is totally organized on Trello in fact I no longer need like a sort of long-term memory for things. I just put it into Trello. <laughs> and it's, it's there. I mean, obviously the problem is you forget to look, don't you? But you know, <laughs> aside from that, you know, it's safe somewhere in the cloud. But one of the things about Trello that I like, it integrates with some of my other favorite apps so well. And one of the things, I think my favorite app isn't like a mobile app as such, but perhaps more of a web app, um, which is called Typeform. Uh, and it's basically a form builder so you can create forms and for business I found it quite revolutionary in terms of you know you can build a form for feedback build a form for questionnaires for um, taking orders and bookings it's got so much versatility to it and you can put them online and then obviously you know send people to them and they fill them out what's great though is that for instance I've got my sort of inquiry form in type form and then that integrates uh, with those other apps so it one of the questions is, you know, can we send you emails of, you know, useful information? So that links to MailChimp and sends them straight into the, into my kind of uh, marketing flow there. Then there's another link at the end, which takes them to Calendly so they can book in a meeting. And then all Calendly's of this information. Absolutely, yeah. Then all of this data <laughs> is then stored in Trello. And I have a board for that and I can move people through the, um, the different cards as we progress through that kind of funnel. So, and it obviously links up with loads of other stuff. You can also take payments through it, you know. Yeah. So it's kind of revolutionary from a, I think a business flow um, management type of point of view. Uh, and it does links. And I think integration is the key for apps. That, that's my view. <laughs> See, I, I love all that kind of stuff because I love one of my other favorites is if this, then that. Yeah. The automation thing. Uh, I think that is, and unfortunately they don't, it doesn't integrate all that well with anything Apple based and I only have mm -hmm. Apple, but I, I still use a couple of the kind of applets in if this, then that, because I just find it. I love that kind of, right. If you've got a photo in Google mail, we'll put it into this folder and it's like, just does it automatically without you having to shift it there or do stuff. I love stuff like that. Absolutely. Yeah. I, I used to, I mean, there's, if this and that, there's also, uh, I think it's Zapier, I think is the other one who's mm. kind of similar. I used to manage my whole kind of social media presence um, once upon a time through using those integrated with another app called Feedly, where you could basically take um, like RSS feeds uh, from different websites. So if you've got a bunch of websites that have got interesting content on them, they'll update into your feedly you pick out the feedly ones with the if this and that you can then send it to your buffer so the buffer then schedules it to uh <laughs> social media 
I just love all of that kind of that whole network when you can set stuff up and it really integrates and does it all for you. That's what that's what I'll have, I'll have a right. question for you, Darren. Then, yes, how much do you pay for all of this? <laughs> because isn't that the beautiful thing? You know, a lot of them are free, but then to yeah. like use them properly, you have to pay I don't know, $9.99 a month. But as soon as you have like 15 of them on the go, that's that's a lot yeah. of expense, really, isn't it? Just for some of this stuff, yeah, they would do it. I mean, that stat that you mentioned at the beginning Claire of how much money apps are worth and mm. very few of them I pay for to be to be fair yeah I think Typeform is the one that I pay for and feel I get great value from because it just adds a few extra layers of, of things you can do with it Trello I do have a I do pay for that part of that though I kind of feel is you know, a sort of a thank you to Trello for changing my life kind of thing. So mm -hmm. <laughs> it's like, I feel, oh, I feel nice. guilty. <laughs> I feel guilty just using it for free forever. Um, mm -hmm. And you do, again, obviously have new additional things you can do with it, particularly like adding people into teams and creating kind of, you know, teams in there, uh, which is useful with client project management. So, yeah, I don't think I spend that much on them all. I mean, well, <laughs> hold maybe on. I do that well, instead done. of amend Kate's question then slightly because it's not the uh, amount of uh, moolah that you spend on it but how much time and this is the question mm. that keeps coming up for me you know like these you know they take an inordinate amount of time and yes they're useful but some of them it's you know let's focus on the social ones and a lot of the time it's just going around and checking the apps just a habit rather than I'll, I've got something important to do and I will check if this has been done um so let me let me park that question and just come come to what do you wish you could do with the apps you know Pete you've mentioned about um uh, what's the word like amalgamating them all mm. that's not the word I'm looking for is automating it? and integrating, integrating them integrating that's the yeah. word um, what else do you wish that you could do with these apps? Um, parenting, cooking, laundry. Yeah, nice. Have a social life. Yeah. Yes. Have parenting and cooking app. A cooking app would be. I mean, the, obviously, oh, isn't that Uber Eats? But, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you see, there is nothing apps can't do. Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, got it got it thanks thanks thank you here all week <laughs> hey i i wish and this may have been dead miserable i wish i'd never got a smartphone I oh wish, claire no <laughs> yeah i wish i'd still got that beautiful nokia nokia 3110 <laughs> where i could just text because to me all they do is suck time and the other thing I wish that I could do is delete WhatsApp. You can. I know. I know I can. Just delete it then. Adults. <laughs> just delete well, it. I like it for friends, but I'm in groups. Can I just exit the groups? Claire has exited the group. Yeah. yeah. Or mute it. I've muted it. I've muted it and I keep getting re-added to groups. And I'm like, no, leave me alone. I don't want to be in your group. No, you well, Stay yeah, you can it. leave groups, but people can add you back into groups, yeah. Yeah. But you can mute it so you don't get all the notifications and you can yeah. do it. Yeah. So maybe you get your Nokia and your <laughs> smartphone and just turn one of them on during the smartphone on during the day and just have your your Nokia on all the yeah. time for your text. Oh, yeah. Well, of course yeah. there's a there's a Nokia app where it makes your smartphone look like an old <laughs> Nokia. Oh, yeah. I don't know you're gonna spend all your time playing Snake. Exactly. <laughs> so, other than integrating, what do you wish you could do with your apps, Kate? Um, well, kind of like on that point, I'm finding that sometimes the syncing doesn't always work. Mm -hmm. And you find that there's apps that will do maybe, or apps that will do 90% of what you want them to do. <laughs> and you've spent, invested all that time in getting them. Then you find, oh, but it doesn't quite sync with that thing, or it doesn't, you know, quite deliver that part of what I need it to do. And that's a wind up. That that makes me cross. <laughs> that's a wind up. It's trying to it's trying to find the right apps for the right thing in your business. And then you find them all. And it's like, now do they all link together? And yeah. do they 
I did have a lovely um, uh, clangor yesterday where I realised that um, my calendars weren't syncing properly and I'd rather helpfully booked a client meeting at the same time as taking the dog to the bloody groomers <laughs> at exactly the same time. Like, oh, and I, I didn't know that because I didn't realise that there was a syncing issue and stuff. So mm. that, that's, that's a bit annoying as well. Um, it takes time to get a system, I think, that works really, really well. Mm -hmm. I don't think there's a perfect one out there. No, and of course, the app people, um, they don't want uh, they don't want us to integrate with other apps. They want no. their app all the time. Mm. Uh, and, you know, if you've watched the social dilemma, that's what they're doing. You know, trying to keep us on as much as possible and keep us coming back as many times as possible. Day. So I think the integration is, you know, the oasis in the desert. Mm. But that's what we want though if they listen yeah. to uh, you know their audience which is what they should be doing you know the apps that do integrate and sync are the ones that we're no. going to use more of mm. yeah i mean i think i agree with that i think there are two types of app builder there's those who are building apps for the greater good of you know business or mankind or whatever and doing it th through love, which is usually where a lot of the apps seem to start out. Mm. And then you get the corporate apps and they tend to you know, buy up the others. So <laughs> and then Facebook. you get Facebook. Exactly. I mean, Facebook started out maybe uh, du slightly dubiously, but, you know, it was perhaps a bit more of a run of the mill app. And now it's just a mega monolith of. Yeah. Yeah. Monolith is know. a great word for it. Yeah. So, I mean, that might be one thing to change just to kind of maybe stop Mark, go back in time, stop Mark Zuckerberg from starting Facebook. Um, you know, that would have, mm. <laughs> that could have helped society. But I think what you're saying, Kate, is, well, what you're both saying, really, in terms of integrations, those kind of smaller apps are all about integration. I think they they want to be able to kind of, you know, work with other apps that people are already using and add benefit to them and, uh, you know, have, have that kind of so, so who are those, Darren? Who are the smaller right. apps? do you want to collaborate and integrate i think like the trellos and okay uh, and those that we've, some of those that we've mentioned really um, so some of the newer ones then maybe because they're kind of newish aren't they in the last five years maybe yeah a bit longer but yeah i think um yeah they're just i think they just have a bit of a more of a, a different ethos you know and it's not just about well certainly it's not about making money i'm not sure what <laughs> The, the sort of revenue is like it, Trello. I guess it's pretty good, but, you know, it's, it's, a lot of it's about value and getting investment and mm -hmm. things like that, whereas mm -hmm. Facebook has gone through that. It's come out the other side and now it needs to sort of make a return on uh, their investors and, and actually make some money. So it's all mm -hmm. about generating income and, you know, it seems to not, mm -hmm. they don't care too much about the qualities, <laughs> it seems, yeah. from the outside. And I think that probably brings me around to the point that I was going to make in terms, which is a bit like Kate's, it's when apps kind of start out simple and then become convoluted. And I'm seeing that with Dropbox at the moment is my kind of Ugh. one where Dropbox started out so simple, a bit like Google Drive and those, it's just a, you know, a file sharing format. And now it's, it's like an, it's kind of just really clunky, I find. It's quite slow as well. Um, so sorry, Dropbox. Uh, they're not sponsoring us today, are they? No. no. <laughs> um, <laughs> not anymore. <laughs> but yeah, they, they've kind of gone a little off the rails, I think. And others are probably doing things. Other, you know, new apps, disruptors. They're kind of doing what Dropbox should have been doing in the first place. Mm. Mm. So who's so, that then? Just out of interest, what's your Dropbox alternative? I'm writing all these down, by the way. I'm okay. learning quite a lot. <laughs> well, all, all of the ones that we mentioned will be in the show notes as well. So all of the apps that we've talked about will be in, there'll be links to them in the show notes. Mm. Um, me, in terms of Dropbox, well, we use it, Kate. We, we transfer, I know it's not quite the same. It's not <gasps> our storage, yeah. but most of what I use Dropbox for, and again, I have a premium membership for that, which is probably... Uh, you know, slating them, but I'm also paying them. Yeah. Um, but I mostly store my photos from my phone. That's pretty much what I use Dropbox for. Mm. And we transfer I use for actually sharing files. Yeah, because I use Dropbox for everything as well. Mm. And uh, yeah, there are some times when it doesn't always work quite as slickly as I'd like. And, you know, syncing across various machines and stuff sometimes yeah. is a bit slow. And yeah, so yeah, interesting. Mm. 
So, Pete, in one sentence, or one word, because I've got one word, share what you have learned about yourself or your business through apps. Um, I think the one word would probably be procrastination. <laughs> because if I'm... So let's talk about this episode. I'll take it away, I'll edit it, and I'll produce it, and then basically you you master the, the audio. And that can take a little while, depending on how big the file is, how long the episode is. And with some clients, you master it, and there really isn't anything else you can do on your computer while it's mastering. It's taking up an awful lot of the, 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 the kind of power of, of the computer. So you just think, oh, well, I'll just check my phone, and you'll have a notification from an app and then that's it that you're on that app for mm -hmm. 10 15 20 hours and <laughs> and that your life has gone so i i think that's the 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 thing i've learned is that if i have any time during the day do not look to an app to fill that time because it mm -hmm. will be like um, it'll be like insulation foam, and it will <laughs> fill the gap and then some. Yes, you know. So that's that's probably my thing with that. And as as fabulous as they are, and I love them, and you know, it's interesting hearing Darren say that about Dropbox because I've been experiencing the same things, and I thought it was just me, um, but yeah, I couldn't. You know, uh, I wouldn't do without them. I'll turn notifications off on some apps, but I am loath. Even Facebook, which I absolutely despise, I cannot stand Facebook, and I use it purely because, as a business, I think I should be on there. But I don't. It's not somewhere I will spend any of my free time. But even there, I will turn off all notifications but I, I'm not quite at the stage of deleting the app. Yeah. Mm. See, for me, it's boundaries, um, which I suppose is kind of what you're saying with your procrastination. It's having really clear boundaries around my phone and the apps that I use. So, you know, I had a purge recently when I just deleted a load of stuff and now um, I've just got one page of, of apps on my phone. Um, but, you know, the boundaries are hard because sometimes when I have just got, you know, five minutes between clients, I, I just automatically pick up the phone and it's like just going around all the apps that I have got. Why am I doing that? Let's just have five minutes of quiet staring out of the window in middle distance. That would be preferable. Um, so, yeah, boundaries. And I would love to hear, you know, from any listeners, what boundaries can be set? Because I set a lot, but it still feels not enough. All I'm thinking of is, is the line that Joey said in Friends when he said, I just wanted to be on my own with my thoughts. It yeah. <laughs> turns out I don't have that many thoughts. <laughs> I haven't got many. <laughs> yeah. yeah, probably true. <laughs> Darren. Oh dear. What well, you I think... about yourself? Sorry? What have you learned about yourself? Well, yeah, mine is well, my word, which I think is a little more positive than, than you guys. Okay, that's know. good. We not, we so, like a nice balance. Yeah, yeah. My, my word is process because it's apps have helped me to start processes, you know, for my business mm -hmm. and for, for life as well, you know, in terms of what Trello, I mean Trello's, you know, as I say, it's sort of my go-to it's uh it's it's where i keep everything but you know sometimes perhaps that process does go a bit wrong when the first thing you do in the morning is look at facebook and twitter mm -hmm. and things like that and other apps rather than you know say good morning to the kids or something <laughs> that's when you know you've got a problem apparently yeah yeah i can't wait for them to get on facebook uh, hashtag good morning kids <laughs> <laughs> Okay, Kate, what about you? Well, I'm going to keep it positive as well because okay, despite good. a few negative experiences, I feel like overall um, using apps has been transformational for me and my business. 
my word is organization because that's where I'm using my apps to um, manage the parts of the business that I'm not very good at and uh, and or, or not you know excited by or interested in as much yeah. as, uh, I'm a creative person and therefore um, processing uh, receipts and invoices doesn't really excite me that much but using the apps has made the process so much easier that I actually don't mind doing it anymore and it means I don't forget things as well because I'm I can be quite sort of oh look at that shiny thing over there mm-hmm. you know, instead of necessarily seeing a task through to the end it's just helped me so much um, and I could never sort of manage the amount that I have to do every day in my business now um, without them you know I was I was just notebooks and just writing things down in notebooks mm-hmm. and um, maybe the odd spreadsheet or something like that moving it into an app has been revolutionary in my organizational skills in my business so that's my that's experience. good that's good I like mm-hmm. that mm-hmm. okay so what's the biggest challenge you have right now with your app Darren, let's come to you first. Yeah, I was, I was challenge. Just my my, uh, my brain was whirring for a second. Um, but I think for me, one of the biggest challenges is that there's there are, as we said at the beginning, so many great apps out there. And I just know that there's an app out there somewhere that's going to change my life, like, say, Trello has. And it's just a case of finding it and using it, you know. And so for me, I don't know whether it's a challenge, but it's, it's um, something I'd like to do, you know, is find, find those apps because there are so many we don't talk about that aren't so well known or up and coming apps that, um, that can change. So, so other than like needing a parenting and a cooking app, <laughs> yeah. what needs changing? Let's see if we can uh, reach out and get some help in what gaps you've got. Well, I'd, I'd quite like a Tesla app, but <laughs> you know, I'd probably need the... Tesla to go with it. Probably, yeah, because there will be a Tesla app, won't there? He's probably got an app. Oh, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm checking that while you... It does. I bet, I bet there is, yeah, it because does. you can open you the can car, beep, can't you? You can beep it. your horn and stuff as well remotely. Yeah. My husband's got one, and uh, I lost the car in a car park, and I couldn't find it, so I had to ring him and ask him to beep the horn. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, there's a Tesla app. Yeah. That, that's the next that's the next big, big life changer for me i think then. yeah <laughs> excellent uh well sorry to go on about it guys but for me it's whatsapp that's my biggest challenge um it's, i'm in a couple of parent whatsapp groups and for any of you who are in those oh you know i've been on holiday for a week leave, leave my phone at home come back and one group had over 400 messages in it we're on we're on we're on a break <laughs> Stay alone and i feel like i can't just go claire has exited the group i've done it once i gave a big explanation of you know my head's full obviously you know i love you all will but whatsapp no i don't want to be in a group where people are messaging all day i've got a life this is where you need more than one page on your on your mobile because what i've done with facebook is to hide it so it's it's hidden in like some folder on the second page kind of thing yeah i have to kind of go out go through a few clicks to actually get to the uh, the app in the first place mm, yeah i suppose it hasn't actually stopped me thinking about it but it's <laughs> I've just I've just got to pull up my big girl pants and and, and leave. I can leave. I'm an adult. I can leave the group. <laughs> Kate, what's your biggest challenge? Uh, for me, it's learning to utilise the apps to their um, best capabilities. Mm-hmm. Um, because I get a bit frustrated with that. I've got some great apps in place and I'm not using them as much as I could. Maybe they could sync with other things that I'm not aware of. Um, That's what I need to do. I need to find some time to learn how to do it, particularly with my um, CRM tool that I've got, which Mm -hmm. on the surface of it looks great, but then I'll start digging around and go, oh, uh, I'm not sure how to do that bit. Oh, I'll come to it later. And And then I abandon it. And then I find that I'm not using the app as much as I should be. 
and it lets the whole process down. So I think for me, it's just finding the time to really learn how to use it. And the same with Trello. I mean, that has so many additional plugins and things like that that uh, that you can use, like um, Gantt charts and all mm-hmm. sorts. Of, uh, mm-hmm. I don't know because I haven't tried. <laughs> I just use it in its most basic function which is enough for me at the moment but you know, yeah it's just learning a bit more about it, about them out of interest mm. you guys have boundaries set in for these apps like are you using them out of hours mm. you can set on your phone a limit so it will stop the app working after if you've been on it a certain amount of time or after a certain hour like you know five o'clock yeah you can do that on your phone okay. yeah <laughs> But then you just put your code in and bypass it and carry it. Using it. <laughs> <laughs> but at least it's like a trigger. Like you've, yeah. been, you've been on looking at these 400 WhatsApp messages long enough now. I think it's time to go and stare wistfully out of the window. No <laughs> yeah, someone just needs to put parental controls on your phone. That's yeah. <laughs> I'll, I'll get my mom onto it. Hey, what's your biggest challenge? Uh, I think mine is probably being a little bit more fussy so again using the kind of productivity apps that we've been talking about and I can't quite remember the name of the one that Darren says he uses it's it's because he he mentioned it once and and it kind of slipped away I can't remember what was it Darren what's that one one? no the productivity one that you use Trello oh that's the fellow yeah yeah. (laughs) I barely remember it barely he's got got shares if only yeah so i've kind of i think i i signed up for that and i've also got um evernote and uh monday i've kind of done a, a test of that and it is just that thing of just choose one just instead mm. of having accounts you know and with the like with the the scheduler so i've got one with buffer i've got one with hootsuite i've got Love me, with- Meg. How many Smart pages you. have you got on your phone, Pete? I have two pages on my phone, but I How have... boxes? It's all the boxes. I keep everything in folders. Yeah. Um, so everything's... So the organisation's quite good, but I just don't... I'm no good at kind of choosing and making the firm decision. I'll just go, you just try them all, and then in the hope that within the trial, you'll suddenly have a revelation that this is the, mm. the app for you and of course it's not like that the app is designed to make you go wait a minute i need to pay for this and, and really get to grips with it um so yeah that's my challenge is um just being more fussy and not just kind of signing up for everything and hoping that the answer will drop into my lap mm-hmm I think I think when you pay for it, you kind of value it more as well, don't you? So yeah, yeah, yeah. And a lot of them are very similar. Some of the platforms that are scheduling, you know, that they they work in similar ways, and it just depends on the like the nuance of your business and how you work. Yeah. You decision, Pete. Stop procrastinating. <laughs> well, listen. Can I? I just want to give you an update. So, in the last episode, when we talked, we were doing delegating dilemmas, and I yeah. said by the next episode, I I have indeed employed a VA. So, I have a VA <laughs> to help me out every couple of weeks with some of the admin work in the business. So, I have done that. So, all That's right good. then. What I will do, I will make a decision regarding a productivity app then by the next episode brilliant hello, and what you- hello. <laughs> asana asana fight 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 uh how many how many apps did we say there were 1.96 million so yeah you can make a decision by next month i think i've i think i've got about 75 percent of them <laughs> brilliant so let's finish on a real positive happy note guys what are the silver linings when it comes to apps for your business i i do think they save time i know i talked about the procrastination and i think that i the procrastination tends to involve social media apps or um, yeah games and things but they gen genuinely do save time because if I do realize, 
you know, that there's something I've not done at six o'clock in the evening. I don't have to turn my office back on yeah. and open everything up. I could just do it on my phone. Uh, and I, when we were, before we started recording, I said I went to the, the cricket at Edgebaston last weekend and I got a message from a client and it was something quite urgent that needed doing with the podcast that was about to be launched. I could do it on the phone. It wasn't mm. like I'll have to sort that tonight when I've got a few pints of beer inside of me and yeah, you know, and it's staying in your head all day. Exactly, then. I could just do it, and it was done, and it was sorted. So for me, that's the the gift that they give is, and the silver lining of them is just that that time that you get to play at games or go on social media apps on your phone. The <laughs> end. Cats, what's the silver linings for you? Uh, well, for me, I think if you can get the ingredients right, you can have a real well-oiled machine like in the operations part of your business. Yeah. And how liberating is that? Um, I think it's a bit of a painful process to just select the right ones, make sure they do all work together, make sure they all do what it is that you want them to do. But when you get there, um, I think that's just a real light bulb moment for you to just be able to get on with the other things. And eventually we can all just be floating heads in jars, can't we? We don't even need, to... <laughs> we don't really need bodies anymore. We can just plug straight into our apps and that's everything for us. I don't want to be a floating head in a jar. <laughs> I'm definitely getting rid of the smartphone if that's going to happen. <laughs> Aaron, are you looking forward to being a floating head in the jar? Um, Silver lining. Yeah, yeah, that's, that sounds good to me. As long as I'm connected to my apps, I'll be fine. Mm -hmm. um, for me, though, my silver lining, I think you're, you're right, it saves, saves time, it saves, you know, automates the process. I think it saves money as well. Um, in mm. the, this is a bit of an assumption, but Kate mentioned Zero and you know, Receipt Bank and those kind of apps for keeping track of your finances. You know, years ago when I started my business, it was all, you know, literally pieces of paper that I'd be writing down, sales, yeah. expenditures, and box full of receipts, all that kind of stuff. Um, having zero uh, means that, you know, it's all automated, it's all online. I can check it when I want, see how my profit and loss is doing and have a little cry. And, uh, <laughs> um, you know, it's all in one place. And to the point where now I just get my accountant to manage all of that and I'm, pretty sure this is why i'm not sure whether it saves you saves you money but i think it does i'd have to ask my accountant but um they it's easier for them too to have mm. it all in front of them so they can do all the vat returns and payrolls and all of the all of the stuff that used to take me a couple of days a, a quarter or whatever um and they can do it in less time at a lower rate kind of thing you know saves saves me money if i was paying someone to do all of that through receipts and bits of paper and um, so yeah, I think it saves them time. It saves money. It's yeah, a brave new world. Yeah, hopefully for for accountants, uh, you know, long gone will be the days of people turning up bags full of receipts and that kind of caper. Uh, hopefully that will go for them. But yeah, for me, it's you know helping my business to run much more efficiently. You know, we've talked a lot about processes and organisation. Yes. The, the apps are huge for that um but for me because I love my banking apps I love just showing my face at my phone and ah! <laughs> <laughs> I don't have to put in all those codes and you know get the little thingy that you have to put a pin in I'm just like show me your face <laughs> Unless you're wearing uh, a mask, if you're wearing a face mask. Yeah. Well, yeah, or in the morning and you're like that. <laughs> um, but yeah, I love, I just love the efficiency of it all. It just makes it seamless. Um, all fun. <laughs> Is it just me who laughs at my banking now? <laughs> Wonderful. Uh, yeah, I love talking about happy apps, considering, you know, um, I've got a love-hate relationship with my phone. But we've shared some great apps there and some great efficiencies and how useful they are in building a process-driven uh, business and helping us to be much more organised. So that was good. <laughs> okay. 
Okay, so uh, for our lovely listeners, please share, subscribe and review so our fellow business owners can enjoy, be inspired and always keep focused on the fun side of business. Sponsored by Trello.